2023 Mother Gaia Third dimensional planet Ascending Into fourth dimensional Collective consciousness Azor Grand Rising Captain Can you give me the update On third dimensional planet Gaia Yes Christo with pleasure Gaia 3D currently is under critical condition. It seems there is a large amount of humans that have forgotten who they are, causing confusion, division and war driven by fear. Thank you Azor. Before we head down to Gaia, can you give me any information about the 3D world as it's been a while since I've been there? Sure, the 3D Gaia. We will face much resistance from negative polarity beings as a dual plane. Karma and Dharma are in effect, there is free will. It will be wise to protect our energy and hold love. Alright, thank you Azar. Sounds like we have quite the task at our hands. But, that's why we're here. And that's why we've been called upon in the Galactic Federation. To go down to planet Gaia, the 3D realm. Alright Azar, let's get ourselves ready to go. Let's hit the time portal and make sure we land in the present day Mother Gaia, third dimension. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's, let's try, try this, this one. one. Maybe, Maybe this, this is the portal. Oh, uh, yeah. Azor, this is a little, little too far, far in the future. future. I think, I think we, we need to kind of go, go back, back a little bit. There, there we go. go. Perfect. Perfect. Modern, Modern day Earth. Earth. Captain Christo, as we approach, I will prepare our guest suite on the mothership for the souls we hold space for. Oh, and Captain. I will be sure to leave plenty of storage for earthly food delights to take for our travels. <laughs> oh my gosh, Azor, you never fail to make me laugh. You know those earthly delights? That good old food of Earth. Absolutely gotta have that food of Earth. Thank you, Azor. Alright. It is time. It's time to make our way down to 3D Gaia. To hold space, show love, compassion, bridge the conscious collective, and help provide knowledge and wisdom and tools so fellow souls can remember who they are, live in a unified mind state the harmonious being with holistic conscious practices and tools that they may access efficiently and quantumly welcome aboard i am azor please get cozy grab a tea snacks or crystals as we prepare for a sacred light conversation the sacred holding space is down the hall to the left. Wholeness balanced love.
Hey, Zor. Hey. Grand day, Captain. Well, first of all, Azor, what is taking so long with those cookies that I asked for? And number two, now that we have our sacred guest from planet Earth that is here to share their story, their wisdom and knowledge for the rest of the tribe, can you go ahead and pull up their background and go ahead and share with the rest of the tribe a little bit about our sacred guest on this coming episode? Crystal, I had, I had to get, get more cookies, cookies from, from the store they call Whole Foods on Earth during our stop with your diet. Two minutes on the timer. Our sacred guest Lisa Cavanaugh, based out of Ontario, Canada. Lisa is an intuitive energy therapist, certified hypnotist and regressionist and a Reiki master teacher. She is also an active member of the National Guild of Hypnotists since 2019. Practicing for eight years, Lisa received her first level Reiki certification in 2014 and masters in 2017. She graduated in 2012 with high honors from Centennial College's Addiction Studies program with a certificate in counseling skills. Gracias, Azor. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I cannot wait for those cookies. I'm so glad you got them. I appreciate it. Thank you for expecting my diet. And they should be ready in just a moment. Just in time for the podcast. How perfect and divine time. And for everybody else, to the rest of the tribe, Get cozy and enjoy this Sacred Light conversation with Lisa Cavanaugh out of Ontario, Canada, as we'll be exploring hypnosis, holistic healing, and how to be conscious and self-aware of your energy field. Feel free to leave comments and feedback. Wholeness, balanced love. Chocolate chip cookies. I will literally do something and like, I'll know that I need to be there at like a certain time and then I'll get there and then like, I'll be doing it and then I'll just lose track of time. Like again, after that, and then like, I'll do it. And then I'm done. And then I'll be like, wait a minute, what is today? Yeah. No, I'm and like I'll that. Like, oh, I thought today was like Friday. It felt like a Friday, but it's Tuesday. But yeah. I'm just like. I know. What? I'm like that too. I'm like that too. Where I, I just, I always, and I, it's always like I seem to always, I never have enough time, but I feel like I have all the time and then I don't. And it's like, what just happened? Yeah. 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 It's interesting. We start exploring. Uh, the dimension of time and space yeah. and it is interesting it's like the more that you focus your your mental energy on time it's like it speeds it up uh -huh. but then like the more you detach your mental from time it then brings you into like a slower density mm -hmm. i don't know i just i find yeah i just i find um I'm not aware of time the way I used to be, where I, an hour felt like an hour. Now, if I'm not consciously, let's say, paying attention to the actual time, I don't know what, I don't know how long I've been doing things. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's particularly, it can be very inconvenient when you're doing sessions because I lose all track of time when I'm with a client and it's kind of like I have to though keep myself on a schedule and it can be difficult for me because mm -hmm. I'm not just, I don't know if it's I don't want to be involved with this time business anymore so I've kind of refusing to try uh, to pay to pay attention too much attention to it or I don't know what it is I resent it maybe <laughs> 
the time having to be told you know having to adhere to these like timelines or something i i don't really know what it is but it's yeah because i'm not anchored the way i used to be in it we are going through rapid change you know yeah. rapid change mm-hmm. and with that rapid change comes great levels of you know shedding shedding layers and going through replayed experiences and also you know feeling emotions and other things as well and with that you know that's it's really a perfect way to segue into kicking off our podcast which is going to be about shedding density and for everybody that are tapped in and here to watch this episode sacred light conversation uh i'm your host marcus crystal light and a little bit about myself just for everybody out there that doesn't know me yet i am a reiki practitioner i'm also crystal healing certified i also teach and help with balancing the chakras i do light language activations oracle card readings and i also help with shadow integration and developing conscious habits and patterns and i do life coaching as well so along with all these practices that i deliver and offer i also do my own editing and producing i have online tv shows i have this podcast sacred light conversations and i've guided meditations on my youtube channel as well with all of this my core intention of why i do what i do and the reason why i dedicate myself so passionately to holding these spaces is because i want to bridge community i want to give the world opportunities to be able to not only connect in a more efficient and more easier way with knowledge tools wisdom as well as human connection and stories through various different resources such as you know podcasts through services through workshops and other things as well and with that just really also want to emphasize helping people become aware of their power within their own self the tools that they can access on the daily and really just how powerful we are in our own innate sovereignty and being able to bring harmony and balance to our everyday life so that's me that's why i do what i do sacred light is something i created in 2018 and that was when i got started with my journey of serving reiki and meditation as well as the podcast and much more so today on this podcast episode of sacred light conversations we are going to be joined by our sacred guest and she actually joined us back in 2019 when i first started sacred light conversations and our sacred guest lisa kavanagh she is out of toronto canada and she first got certified in Reiki in 2014 and then in 2017 she became a Reiki master since then she has been doing attunements and teaching Reiki to other students she is also a high honor graduate at the Centennial College Addiction Studies program and that was in 2012 Lisa is also certified as a hypnotist and a regressionist and is also an active member of the National Guild of Hypnotists since 2019. Currently, Lisa is collaborating and providing her services at two local spots out in Canada and the first one being Equilibria and that is in Toronto. And the second is Live to Thrive in Port Perry. 
And then on top of all of this, she has much experience in clinicals with addiction, eating disorders, and post distress orders as well. So Lisa very passionately over her years has blended and mixed together all these different practices from the mainstream to her own authentic intuitive side and the holistic side as well and has been blending them and nicely delivering and serving them to many different clients around the world and mainly based in Canada as well. So today we're going to be talking on some key topics such as dismantling and what the process of dismantling fear-based beliefs mm -hmm. and intentions and identities can look like mm -hmm. as well as the integration process of integrating your higher self-awareness and then we'll also be touching on moving through ascension with more ease self-love and support so without further ado lisa thank yes. you for joining us thanks marcus it's uh like we were talking just a little bit before we got started about how it's been four years and how 2019 does not feel four years ago to me it just it feels like we've been in some kind of void space because to me it feels like a, maybe a year and a half ago maybe but I, yeah, it's just interesting how quickly things are moving, how quickly we're moving through things now. And certainly we've been through a lot uh, collectively over the last four years, but things are really, I feel like intensifying now. So, which with that intensification, um, if we think about the way I kind of, with the dropping density, the way I think about it is, if the earth, so the grid system in the earth, right? The ley lines of the earth, right? We're connected into those ley lines. So the earth is shifting energetically. And if, I don't know, Marcus, if you've noticed where you are, but the last summer, especially the skies, uh, sunsets and things were much more vibrant in colors with purples and pinks. And it's like the earth has come online. It's much more green. It's alive again. It feels like the earth is is alive, and because the earth's shifting in consciousness. And we look at kind of the macro to the micro as the earth shifts. People who are open to that are shifting. You you are whether you know you're shifting or you don't. You are right, and whether that's an intention of yours or it's just happening, right and I feel like with that kind of shifting, you embody more of who you truly are. You embody more light. Um, and we think of light, right? Light, light is information, right? And it's opening up, for me, it's like opening up the cellular expression, the DNA, the, it's activating people. And um, I feel like, to embody more light, more consciousness, you have to drop density. It's it's like a natural purging starts to happen. And so this kind of process of dropping density can feel really uncomfortable. It can feel chaotic. It can feel, you can feel overwhelmed. You can feel um, sad. You can feel depressed. You can feel anxious. And, you know, a lot of people, I think they come on, especially if they consider themselves spiritual or they come on to kind of the, the ascension path or they consider themselves to be awake or awakening or whatever, whatever language resonates. I think we've been we've been misled to believe that it should be this beautiful, blissful, peaceful, just kind of floating away right like magical kind of experience and it's kind of that idea of good vibes only right I, I, oh yeah only i good vibes only i only want to be around people who are positive and if and it's kind of this idea that to feel negative is somehow not accepted or it's bad 
right? Mm -hmm. um, and also this idea that um, people, when people are struggling, right? We're going through things because we have to go through these things to kind of to drop the density and to come back into who we truly are. Uh, but if when you're going through maybe a more challenging or difficult period where there's a lot more discomfort and a lot of sorrow can be coming up and a lot of things that you kind of have, have been pushed down, like even childhood stuff is coming up, um, that somehow you're negative or you're attracting negativity to you. And I think there's a real difference between being kind of in that kind of love and light bubble and truly being with in the in this kind of allowing the kind of authentic unfolding of the process which can look and feel uncomfortable right physically mentally and emotionally and often when I, i'm working with clients lately and i've noticed a real theme i would say this last year in particular it seems more of a common theme and they're coming in and they're saying i feel like i'm backsliding i feel like i'm moving i'm kind of um regressing i thought consciously i was so much far ahead and all this stuff is coming up and i feel i'm reacting to things again and i'm feeling all this stuff and i feel like i'm losing myself and and i'm kind of like well no things more it's another layer of stuff coming up and you have to allow it and feel it and go through it and it you have to allow, you have to feel the triggers. You have to feel it, right? Um, uh, you can't mask it with positivity. That'll just keep it stuck. You'll, you'll just be stuck there. And um, I say to them, you know, if you came in here and told me that you were fantastic and every day was, you know, uh, you had everything figured out and you felt your emotions were, you know, in this kind of high vibrational state constantly, I would say to you, I would wonder what was wrong. What's gone wrong? That's, I wonder what, what, what has gone wrong in this process? Like, right? Because um, it, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I think a lot of us kind of, we get into this new age stuff because we're looking for the information and then we get sold, or we used to get sold this idea that it's all yoga. It's all uh, being a vegan. It's all you know, oh, yeah. crystals and it's all like, it's, 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 it's like the image of what it is to be spiritual. And I would say I, I, everyone is spiritual. You know, the guy who, you know, works at the mechanic, you know, down the road who, you know what I mean is it doesn't necessarily do yoga and do all that, but he's very in tune. He's in highly empathetic. He's sensitive. He's spiritual, but I don't think we need all of this I don't know the accessorization of it to, to be spiritual and i mean i'm not taking away anything from people who are vegan exactly. but it's not it's not one size fits all and you don't have to be check the boxes to be considered spiritual what you have to do i think mm -hmm. is where's your intention right do you have pure intentions are you willing to do the work are you self-aware do you have genuine empathy and compassion for others you know what I mean? Are you, do you kind of have this kind of wishing to be better, to help, to be of service to, you know, the collective, to humanity? That's definitely spiritual. And I, I don't care what you look like, or I don't care what you, what you eat or don't eat, or I don't care how much yoga you do or breath work. You know what I mean? And I think when you kind of come onto this path to embody more of who you truly are, we got to drop the density that has been in the way. And that's messy and it's uncomfortable. And you can feel like you're on this roller coaster of, you know, one day you're like, yeah, I'm, I feel it. Everything I'm, I feel like I'm on my path and I, I feel really inspired or whatever. And then the next day it's like you wake up and you're like kind of flat or you're feeling all this stuff coming up or all this self doubt, or you're kind of like feeling lost or, you know, or you're feeling a lot of resentment or irritation is coming up around, you know, certain dynamics or people. And that's what it is, I feel. It's like you got to be able to allow the, the dirt to rise to the surface, all the gunk, all the distorted energetic patterns and belief systems and all the conditioning. And it, it's painful. It's It can be painful or just uncomfortable, right? 
even when I say yeah. the word painful, I'm like, oh, should I be saying painful? Well, it's painful. Painful. You feel deeply, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a lot sometimes. And I feel like in this juncture, because there's so much rapid, it's so rapid in the earth, this ascension, this kind of consciousness, uh, rising it's accelerated so much that we're being pushed now i feel there's an acceleration of a lot of us to get this density out right get this stuff moving out to embody more light because i also think that i don't care what you do but just by just by being here at this time um, it's almost like, and someone described it, and I thought it was a perfect analogy. It was actually Lisa Renee. Um, she's uh, she has energetic synthesis, and she was describing. Oh how, yeah. Yeah, I. She saved me. She, I honestly, has saved my life. But she talks about how um, we're all kind of like think about us as being like these little acupuncture needles all around the globe. And we're embodying light. We're we're anchoring light through our physical body and bringing it into the earth grid, right? And yep. so, you know, the more we release this density, we shed these old layers. The more light we can hold. And we also kind of the more light we hold, the more we can infect other people with that light if they're open to it. Just by showing up, we don't have to be doing anything. We just have to be in the room. And we can help, yeah. right, affect people in a way. Um, we can even be a very stabilizing, neutralizing energy. We can be a safe person. We can help people decompress just by being in the room, right? So yeah. it, it transcends what we do and it's who we are. And, right, which is this whole dismantling process, getting away from all the labels, all the identities, all the all all the all this idea of our worth has been uh is ex based on external things you know uh what we have what we achieve how we look and we start to get back to the truth mm -hmm. which is is natural law which is your worth is inherent you are worthy because you are period right but we yeah. forget we forget that and we get all mired but i think at the root of all this kind of we hold all these distortions and these false identities and everything and at the root of them all it's fear mm -hmm. fear at the root of everything it's fear it's a fear of not being accepted it's fear of being left behind it's fear of being abandoned it's fear of not being lovable it's fear of you know not having enough Th these are the reasons that we 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 cling to these identities right and we all have different reasons and we all have different, I think, things we've been through that kind of make us um, cling on to these kind of constructs, right? Um, but at the heart of it, it's always fear. I think at, at the heart of every distortion, it's fear. Because when you know your worth, you're in a state of, right, love, self-love. You know who you are. Oh, yeah when you are looking for that external validation and you're trying to base prove your worth constantly based on the external or looking for validation constantly for people to validate your worthiness you're in fear and that fear will act as a, a real strong barrier from you coming into who you truly are right and that's where you're that's where you're powerful. That's where you have your freedom and sovereignty. And and that's when you embody more light. I'm not saying that. And there's no perfection in this. It's a process. But I feel oh, like yeah. you're doing the best you can. And you continue to kind of move along. And personally, for me, there's no, um, there's no kind of end. There's no end goal. It just things come up as they come up. And you, sometimes they'll come up and you think, I thought I already released this stuff. I, I thought this was kind of over, but then there's another layer that will come up, right? And it can yeah. happen too. I, I tell people, certainly clients that I work with, that 
it can be a very it's a very organic process in your higher self your god self your you know avatar self whatever you want to call it right has that wisdom uh, it knows what you're ready for when you're ready for it and sometimes we can't release it all at once because it would be too overwhelming to our physical body or emotional body and we just don't have the capacity for it but it will come back around then and then there'll be another layer to look at right yeah so yeah it's uh uh it's so awesome that you um uh you know describe it this way because it's actually a very similar way that i've described it mm -hmm. and i haven't really came across many that uh that really talk about it in this type of way mm -hmm. but the the process of healing mm -hmm. and this is actually why i created a um online show that i created last year right and it was during the winter time called the process of clearing layers mm -hmm. and the reason why i called it that is because i was just having like a download and going into like a really deep thought about making like a live and i was gonna go live for like just one time mm -hmm. and i was gonna go live talking about just you know my view and anything that channeled through me about just the holistic process of what healing looks like mm -hmm. <clears throat> from a micro to macro level yeah and with that just really like explaining the process of remembering how we're energetic beings and how we go through experiences we accumulate energy from those experiences and then that energy quantumly gets entangled into our being and then it turns into layers of energy mm -hmm. then it becomes density within the being mm -hmm. and then within these layers is where we have you know the memories the energies and anything else that is going to be coming with that experience that took place right and yeah. it's going to be stored within our being yes. and then from there you know, it results into physical ailments, yeah. such as lower back problems, uh, stress in your shoulders, mm -hmm. things like that. Right. Um, and then continuing on, basically, when you get into the healing process, you start to open up and dig into these layers that have been accumulated into your being and energetically. Mm -hmm. And with that, that means you start basically cracking open and opening up these memories, these yeah. energies, these experiences that are already within your being now. So now what you're experiencing is you're experiencing instead of the external coming in, you're experiencing the internal of what was already external that you experienced mm -hmm. and has now been accumulated. Now coming back, basically reverse the opposite direction to basically yes. come back out back to the external yeah so okay. that's why we experience what seems like taking steps backwards because these memories and experiences that we had already experienced from the external in are now coming back up from the internal to the external and if we're not aware of that we can get caught up in it and then the energy has become entangled and it either creates you know a further buryment creates a even possible trauma experience uh so much more things but that was like the way that i've been able to explain it and really see it so it was yeah. really nice to hear that from you well i feel like you know and another thing i i really feel strongly about is if you think about the word um emotions it literally means energy in motion right so when you are you've got you know your life force is flowing optimally it's coming down that central vertical channel and feeding into the energy centers of the body life force is flowing 
that means then the body, the systems in the body, the glands, the organs are getting the life force they need to function optimally, right? So and then you're in what we call, I guess that's alignment. You're aligned, life force is flowing emotionally, mentally, physically, you are in alignment, you're balanced, you're in alignment with who you truly are. That's right. If everything is perfect or the way it, it should be like a is it kind of like a, a spiritual homeostasis? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. So then what happens to us, right? Well, um, we feel things and we are taught, we're conditioned, never feel bad. Don't feel bad. So it's kind of like, um, is this idea that if you feel negative, negative, you are somehow negative. Uh, a lot of this masking, you know how, let's say you go through something that's really, really upsetting but it doesn't qualify like we have to work in the morning and it's so it's somebody in your family didn't die and it's not so it doesn't qualify for you to take time off work or you don't feel it's worthy of maybe calling in sick or whatever and so you go into work and what do you do you mask right you pretend that you're okay or try to pretend you're okay because you don't want anyone to know that you're in pain because that makes you vulnerable plus it makes you uh can make you look weak like all of this garbage basically is teaching us to push our emotions down right and when we're children especially we don't have the emotional intelligence to understand always what we're feeling we're feeling it but we don't know why we're feeling it and children take everything in right i think it's up until the age of seven right. Children are like a uh, a computer with no software uploaded. And then through their experiences, and typically it's through what they, the authority figures around them, they, children are so vulnerable to, right? To your parents, your teachers, and, and they, they're also taught to be good means that, you know, you want to be good so you follow the rules and you, we take it all in as truth. And children absorb a lot of uh, energy and emotions from from people around them. So, and they don't have the capacity to process them. So if we look again at energy and motion, it means when we feel things, we allow the feeling, we sit in it, we process it, and it moves through us fluid, life force flowing, and it's released. When we don't do that, like let's say an example would be Let's say you're someone who, for whatever reason, picked up the belief that what you think doesn't matter. You're afraid of conflict. Uh, you are afraid of uh, being abandoned if you speak up. Right? So all of this emotional stuff that you are afraid to, you're afraid to release, you're afraid to speak to other people, you're holding it all in your throat. And so that's like this energetic sludge right? It's called actually dead energy. It creates uh, distortions and um, like miasma, right? Which is just like this sludgy blockage stuff. And so over time, it will continue to build. And if you think about, right? So now you've got this sludge. Think of your energy body as a set of pipes or plumbing. Now you've got all this sludge in your, in your throat, all this unprocessed emotional stuff. And now life force flows trying to come down and it can't kind of, it's trickling through, can't, it's all blocked up. Then what have you got there? You've got your thyroid, you have your lymph nodes, your neck, your spine. Those organs in that area are now not getting the life force flow they need to function optimally. So what happens over time, emotional disease, this is stuff that's been unprocessed for whatever reason, a lot of the times it's we just don't have the capacity. Unprocessed stuff, right? Emotional dis-ease over time will manifest, as you said, Marcus, into physical dis-ease. So what we want to do is we want, I mean, just in doing energy work and, you know, you know this. And when I work with my clients, I, I do energy work as well, is we want to start to open those pathways up and get things moving, which means flushing it out. Right. And a lot of the times that means it's got to come up to the surface to be felt, mm -hmm. to be witnessed, to be felt, to be honored in your experience and saying, yes, this really hurt me not to judge it. That's where we get into trouble. If we start to judge it and we start to say, I don't this I'm not allowed to feel this. And we're, we're, are we looking for someone else to give us permission to feel the way we feel? That's when things get dicey. 
And it's not about the feeling. It's about how do we then respond to the feeling, right? So if you can be angry, but then it's about how do I, do I react explosively or do I, you know, allow the anger, the that anger charge to kind of, do I project that outward or can I sit with it and allow it and get it out in a way that is not projecting? Can I own that anger? And then can I choose when things have calmed down and that charge has been neutralized, can I choose how I'm going to respond? Right? That's the, that is the, that's the difference. It's not the emotion. It's what we do with the emotion when they're charged emotions. Right? Yeah. Um, and I think one of the biggest things, if we think about energy as just emotions, as just energy, they're different energetic frequencies. If we can take the label off of good and bad emotions or positive and negative emotions, and we start to think of them as frequencies, and we start to look at them as high and low, right? And we don't judge them. I think that's really key in allowing a lot of this stuff to come up. Because if we're afraid to be angry, or we're afraid to feel depressed, and when I say actually, when I say be angry, what I really mean is feel angry. Feeling angry doesn't make you an angry person. Feeling depressed doesn't make you a depressed person. It, it's a, you're moving through an emotional state. And if you allow it to be processed and you release it, then you come back into that kind of balanced state again, right? Yeah. Right? I think it's like a really big thing that it's really easy for us to get caught up on uh, as humans is, you know, the identifying. And when we identify, like really becoming finite with that mm -hmm. identification, right. as if it's like we are just solid that one identity our whole entire lifespan. And mm -hmm. um, the more I've been able to detach from that type of programming, I've been able to kind of remember and become more in tune with just the multi-dimensionality of who we mm -hmm. are and just becoming more aware of you know not only are there multiple different bodies and layers to who we are as in you know physical body mental body emotional body mm -hmm. astral body and others as well um we start to be able to kind of really um start seeing how these different um it's almost like different drawers to a cabinet you know mm -hmm. like each cabinet holds specific things that make the whole entire drawer mm -hmm. and um that's how it is for me when i look at the mental emotional and physical you can start seeing how there can be ways to kind of cater to each one and be able to help them harmonize and attune with each other mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and i think i think you know if we're if we are afraid or we're ju judging things it, it can block the process because we're again it, we're not allowed to feel these negative emotions then they're going to stick then we'll avoid them right if we think that being angry somehow makes us less uh evolved you know what I mean? And and it's again, it's it's not about the anger. It's about what we choose, how we choose to engage with that anger. Can you engage with a level of self-awareness? Can you sit with it and allow it? And can you do the self kind of introspection with it and say, OK, what am I really angry about? Because I would say 90 percent of the time, what you're really angry about is not actually what is presented itself in front of you usually it's it triggers this old belief of someone has disrespected me uh someone has um crossed a boundary but there can also be that anger can also come from wounding right places that have been, we've been wounded that we haven't looked at or we haven't healed can trigger anger and it can almost feel like the anger becomes disproportionate to what has actually just happened right 
Yeah. So I think it's really important about sitting with it, saying, okay, why am I actually it? What 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 part of this can do I need to own? Right, and then what what do I need to look at here? Right, and you know why do I feel all of a sudden, let's say, threatened, or why do I feel so triggered, or why do I feel this feeling? And just sit with it, you know. And sometimes the anger can just be because you're angry because uh, you know someone was inconsiderate or you know whatever, right? But I feel like I think it's important to go inward first and allow and do the introspection. You have to have the self awareness. If you're not willing to look at yourself, you're not willing to own your emotions then you're always going to be, I think, again, externalizing. Well, they did this to me. This is why. And it's almost like you become a victim. And it, there's a big difference between feeling your emotions, I think, and having, allowing your emotions to be charged to the point that they're running you. Big difference. I can feel it, right? And I can sit with it. Or I can allow it, the charge to get so strong that now I can't control my outer expression big difference right yeah <clears throat> and and when we i feel like when we're talking about density i think there's like as you were saying the different bodies there's just different levels there can be even viral loads that we're holding cellularly as almost cellular waste let's say you had uh, strep throat when you're a kid and now you have maybe epstein bar in your in your cells that is dormant but it's there and that acts as density because you know the body needs to process and release that so even during this kind of uh, ascension process when we're dropping density you can have physical symptoms they sometimes call it ascension flu or you can have aches and pains in your body or old injuries or old kind of viral stuff coming up as it's being released you can feel very very physically tired at times where you need a lot of rest and then there's the, of course, the emotional density, right? And this is stuff that's happened in the past that hasn't been processed and released. And then there's the mental density, which is what I was talking about is the, uh, how do we identify, right? What are our limiting beliefs? You know, where are places that we've took on beliefs based out of fear, right? So all of this starts to push up to the surface and it can feel very destabilizing very uncomfortable uh you can feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster and you can feel very alone in it if you you can feel very alone and sometimes people my clients will say i feel like i'm gonna lose my mind <laughs> right because it's yeah. it's, a, it's a lot and i i feel like um if we can't be honest about this stuff and we can't talk about it and we wash whitewash it or wash it over with this beautiful kind of you know, love and light, you know, rainbows and unicorns and all that, I don't know, stuff, it, it can, it can be harmful to people, I think, because then they think, oh, there must, it can feed that distortion of I'm, I must be flawed in some way, because I'm not even doing the spiritual stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, right? you know, also add to that, that, um, you know, for presenting it that way, uh, mm -hmm. presenting it as in, as in that that there's no like um that there's no tough times that there's no you know pain that could yeah. be felt that there could be exhaustion you know, that could be a part of it and i'm not yeah. i'm not saying that it's all that because it's certainly not all that but there can be at certain junctures there can be there can be a healthy amount of that there can be a lot of that going on right yeah and, and if, we're, if we're not you know giving the full the full the full plate of you know what it is that you know people can be experiencing or getting their self into mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> i mean there's so much that can come with that um you know if if we're not aware of you know the the side effects or you know the consequences of what it is that we're going to take action upon mm -hmm. and then you know those consequences take place and we didn't know you know it can create 
a very unpleasant experience to where it can then draw us away mm -hmm. from desiring to ever want to mm -hmm. want to experience something like that again yeah. because you know we were not really given the guidance right and the, the clarity of you know what all it takes to be upon this type of path yeah. and or journey feels so isolated and you don't there's not the inclusion and i know for me when i think about it when we think of light what is light information truth honesty right when i think mm -hmm. of darkness what is darkness deception so if you are you know kind of in a state of delusion or trying to project this image of what you think it means to be conscious because that's what you've been told it should look like and you're afraid to kind of talk about or you don't have the space or you don't have a sense of community or you, you don't have a practitioner or whatever it looks like where you can really just be who you are and speak the truth then you know you can get lost in distortion and that can and what's the what's the kind of opposite of it can make you feel separate and that's the opposite of unity the whole point of all of this is unity and the whole point of it is to i think honor the richness and fullness of the human experience which is having feeling going through exploring all these different energetic states of emotion that's what gives us the richness and fullness that's what it is to be i feel at the essence of of humanity is the fullness and richness of the emotion and our capacity for empathy unity for all of those beautiful things but if we were picking and choosing what's okay and what's not okay i have a real problem i, I have a real problem with that and i think that it i think it can be damaging so I try to speak as honestly as I possibly can about what the process has felt like for me and in what I've witnessed in working with you know, lots of clients. So, and it's, you know, and I don't care how much yoga you do or don't do, or to me, it's, it's what's your intention? Where are you coming from? What's your heart, right? Yeah, yeah. intentions, intentions go a long way. Tensions are like our intentions are kind of like our um, it's like well, our etcher. Well, the like etchers are our pathway. Well, the intention can direct the emotional charge of the energy. Yeah, exactly. It's how we direct the intention can be kind of how we choose to direct our energy, what we wish to focus on, what we wish to uh, feed, if you will, energetically, right? So I think intention is everything, really. We, we, your intention can really, your intention at the core can, is kind of the orientation of your energy body. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it just, it can get, it can get, heavy at times and um i feel like um a lot of it it's kind of like as your kind of conscious elevates right and this is natural this isn't this doesn't necessarily have to have you aspiring for this this is just happening to people right as they're embodying more light they're connected into the earth they're the lights coming down that conscious information starts to open pathways up and then all of a sudden they're in the ascension process but it doesn't matter if they intended it or not it's starting right and i feel like um the more you embody the light the more you become in alignment with who you truly are and you naturally hold more light but that density has got to come out and all of the old beliefs, identities, perceptions that are all based in fear have to kind of be drawn up to the surface like a massive purge so you can look at it, right? Um, and I'm just looking at my notes here. 
And sometimes it can feel, I don't know, um, like it, it can sometimes feel like there's that old um, analogy of, you know, it can feel kind of darkest before the dawn <laughs> at times. Oh, yeah. It's so true. Um, but I will say that um, people who I, I guess would identify or feel deeply and who are highly empathetic, right? If we think about energy, emotions, energy, emotions, empaths, what can they do? They're reading energy constantly. They, they can be absorbing energy constantly if they're not kind of they haven't really formed strong boundaries and it's gonna it, it there's a lot of energy transference that can happen anyway even when you have strong strong boundaries as sometimes it's just it's unavoidable it's information right yeah. um and so one thing that i've discovered that i think is crucial uh for myself is self something called self-sourcing so when i am around a lot of people or engaging with a lot of people, even by a text for long periods of time, I can start to feel depleted because I'm always reading into energy, always, mm -hmm. always, always. And when I feel a little bit depleted, I have to go into a state of kind of, I have to be in my, my own energy. And that's how I can replenish myself, being in my own energy. Um, in what I call, it's called like, to me that I call it self-sourcing. So hmm. it look like needing, a, needing a, a lot of alone time at points, depending on how much engage, engagement you had, right? I need that. And, you know, but I think you, people can also think that this need for alone time means there's something wrong, like yeah. been conditioned to believe that, you know, there's something off with you or you somehow flawed in some way if you like to be in your own company or you need that it's like are you depressed you know you should be out there you should be constantly engaging again this idea that our worth is based on you know what i mean how much how popular we are or how much we're doing or how much we engage with people yeah. or how busy we are how much how productive we are so for me i had to really break through that barrier of because most of my life i felt like there was something weird about me because i preferred uh at times not to be at the birthday party or i didn't want to do the swimming lesson or whatever because i i needed to be alone because going to school for me some days was a lot but then i think People who were well-meaning started to wonder if I had some kind of anxiety disorder or personality disorder or I was kind of something was all wrong with me. And I took that in, that there's something weird about me. You know, I'm too introverted. I have to change that. And so for a long time, I, I tried to force myself to be more of an extrovert, but it would just drain me. And when I, of course, once I start to understand more of this and I consciously, you know, had the kind of, I could define it in words that I could feel, but I didn't have the words for it. I didn't have the context. That's what I mean for it. I realized that I need, a, I need alone time. It's how I recalibrate. It's how I release energy, other people's energy, any kind of like a residue that I've picked up. Um, and I think that's critical. And I think there's for different, for different people, there's different modalities that can be very helpful as well. Um, besides self-sourcing, um, for me, salt baths can be extremely helpful. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, because it purifies the energy body, right? It can help draw out this gunk or stuff we've picked up maybe during the day. Um, you know, movement, if I want to clear my energy, movement, right? Because moving the body gets the energy pathways opened, right? Gets things moving. Um, wherever I'm holding constriction, right? When we think about where we're holding tension in our body, the energy receivers are constricted, they're closed, life force isn't flowing. So then there's modalities like, you know, massage or body work or just even stretching. Like what I'm saying is you have to discover kind of what those, what you need to self-source and what you need to kind of assist yourself through this process and what it really comes down to is if you're going through a lot of this purging and this releasing density, you need a lot of nurturing. You need a lot of nurturing.
from yourself. And that means you've got to be able to go inward and you've got to kind of check in with your body and you've got to, you know, ask yourself, what do I need? Or sometimes people even talk about, you know, going inward and talking to the inner child, right? How can I support you? What do you need from me? How can I care for you? Right? And so I think everybody's got different things, but I think you have to kind of to get through this kind of some of the, the harder parts, you have to know what works for you and you have to stop kind of looking for permission from the external to say it's okay to sleep for 12 yeah. hours or it's okay to need to just spend the weekend alone. Um, you, you're not going to get that validation from people who have not are not going through it because they don't understand and what they don't know they don't know so they can't possibly give that to you because they don't understand what you're going through yeah and ultimately you need to go inward and figure out what what is what does it look like for me what do i need and then you need to be kind of like the parent to yourself and you need to be able to give yourself that nurturing and a lot of compassion and acceptance you have to be able to accept where you are. You know what I mean? Even it may not be where you prefer to be, but it's almost like, can you start to look at things and embrace things as they are and not as you wish them to be? Because when you're holding on to what you think it should be or what you want it to be, it can create a lot of resistance, a lot of tension, <laughs> constantly kind of beating yourself up for where you are. And that can feed into this idea that I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy enough or I'm not doing it right. And we don't want any of that. We don't want any of that. We want to just, yeah. this, this is how it is. This is what I feel. And I'm going to allow for that. And I'm going to consciously participate with it in a nurturing way as long as I need to. And that could be a week. It could be a day. It could be three hours. Who knows? Right? Depends. Yeah, because you got to think about it. Like, you know, th those are some excellent points. Um, you know, if we're, if we're like, you know, just starting to get our body at ease mm -hmm. and we're just like starting to really get, <clears throat> you know, our thoughts relaxed and our emotions are grounded and, and you know, we just got into that state of like peacefulness. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you know, we're, we're basically telling our being, oh, nope, we gotta keep, we gotta keep doing better. Like we gotta, we gotta keep going. We gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta do more. This isn't good enough. Like we're not, we're not changing. We're not doing we're enough to change and grow. That's we're right. not doing enough to be, you know, according to what this person is as spiritual yeah, or you know we're not as ascended as we want to be right but then what that does is it gives off a signal to your nerves and everything else in your being that it needs to get back into like you know fight or flight mode it needs to get back into Hi. really driven masculine energy yeah and sure. also you know with what you're talking about prime example of balancing both our masculine and our feminine energies mm -hmm. within each of us right. is knowing how to serve, create, mm -hmm. put forward energy through yeah. action. Action, inspired action, yes. And that's your masculine. Yeah. And then this is the side that I see quite neglected in society is the feminine side and the feminine it's side is written out of everything have you noticed that yeah, it's that ability <laughs> to Go ahead, allow Barbara. yourself to decompress to surrender to let go wow. to allow yourself to receive nurturing see. to allow yourself to replenish and to allow and your energy to harness again yeah and there's been i think yeah, it's the wisdom of knowing when is time for action, right? And creating and, and all of that good stuff. And when is time for rest and replenish? And I would say the theme right now 
for a lot of people, including myself, and wow, I'm resisting it too, is rest and replenish. We're in a time of nurturing. And if you think about even seasonally, right? If you look at Chinese medicine, the yin, right? Energy, what is that? It's, it is kind of that receiving, it's the feminine, it's the nurturing, it's the, uh, it's like um, warmth, right? The yin. Um, and so we're in that time right now where, you know, now is time for stews and soup. And as we go into kind of, you know, the fall and warmth and tea, right? So it, yep. it doesn't- Hibernation, self-awareness. Right. That's right. A lot of people right now are feeling this need to come into that state. They need to rest. And if you're fighting it, it's just going to create more resistance. And then I think it's the difference between, you know, that you're going, you're going no matter what. This is not up to you. I, I, this is not something mentally you can, you do. This is something that happens on an energetic level on an emotional level it's beyond you and you're going as you're going to ascend if you're already on the path you're going to ascend you're ascending it's happening and you can either flow along kind of the river or you can get you know pulled down the rapids it's really up to you right but it, you're going anyway and i say that to people all the time i'm like well you're going anyway so you the how you go is up to you if you resist and you want to hold on to stuff and you want to, you know, judge yourself and you want to, you know, you're holding on to all these old constructs or old relationships, it's a big thing, right? It's, you want to hold on to it. Well, you're going to get pulled with a force, right? To release it. Or you can let it go on your own and flow down the river, right? It's up oh, to you. Gosh. Yeah, it, it reminds me of a quote that I came up with because um, I was I was just really kind of pondering on this type of stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't remember who I was talking to, but yeah, I, it was pretty much like just the realization of like the stereotypes that we have been conditioned to kind of autopilot and say that limitate ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was thinking of like just a stereotype of how like in the in the healing process it's like typical you know for for humans to want to become like how they were before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they comfort. went through whatever they went through and i get completely why I mean, I did it a lot throughout my life as well, that we would want to go back to how we felt before, you know, the pain and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then it's also like, just coming to the remembrance that like, you know, it's not about becoming who you were before that. It's about becoming like, you. And don't get me wrong, like, yeah, you know, you were in a great place before that. But like, it's embracing the unknown of who you're becoming. You knowing can. that who you're becoming is going to be who you were before that pain plus yeah. a lot more a lot more and if yeah. you start embracing that and like mm -hmm. really taking in that type of vision yeah. knowing that like oh like not only am i becoming who i was before the pain but like i'm becoming a even greater version of it mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah it's it's the the certainty right it's we we feel more com comfortable in things that we feel are certain things we know and we're much less comfortable in the unknown it's like i know that i'm shifting but i don't know what i'm becoming i don't know what what this looks like and so that can feel uh that can feel uncomfortable well it is uncomfortable because you don't know what it's going to look like but you have to that's where the that piece of the i think divine trust or blind faith or something comes in and it just you have to kind of let it go and allow yourself to kind of be led into and really you're com coming back into who you truly are and that's always as you said it's always going to be so much better than who you were it just will be more of that 
you know, more of the best will will come out, right? Um, yeah. But I feel like uh, the the thing that happens too with people is all of a sudden, you know, when you're going through this kind of dropping density, this dismantling, relationships, jobs, interests, they all start to can start to feel like they don't serve or it's almost like you can't connect with certain people anymore the way you used to or yeah. the job that you've been kind of spent years and years kind of building yourself up in your career and now it doesn't fulfill you anymore it doesn't it doesn't bring you the satisfaction that you thought it would or that it used to and interests, certain interests, like you just, you're t you don't want to do things that are surface or you don't enjoy things that you used to enjoy. And that can be very daunting because it's like, and relationships especially, it's kind of, especially in partnerships um, where one person consciously, and if we just think of it as energy, energetically, one person consciously begins to kind of evolve, but the other person isn't yet, creates this divide. And then in order to connect, it's kind of like you got to kind of do this, but that will be very draining. It doesn't feel good because it's a form of self-betrayal, kind of lowering yourself, lowering yourself. Yeah. And so, right. And so that can be very, very difficult because you're, let's say you've been in a relationship with somebody or even a friendship for years and you thought that this was it. This was the person or this what, and then all of a sudden one day you wake up and you're like, I can't relate. I don't feel like I connect with this person anymore. They don't, and it's not even personal. That's the thing we get caught up because we take it so personal. It's energy. Not even personal. It's resonance. So there's three, as far as I, I know, there's three states of energy in phase. So right now, Marcus, you and I and the audience, we're all in phase. We're able to be open, honest, it should feel comfortable, right? It, there can be an upliftment that happens when you come together who's you're in phase with. That means energetically you're on the same, you're resonating, you're on the same frequency. And then there's out of phase. So out of phase is kind of like where it's kind of like this, right? That can be an example. It would be, let's say you work with somebody and it's not that you dislike the person. It's... It's just that it's uncomfortable, like it's very small talk and you you can't really talk about certain things with them because, you know, you just know that it wouldn't be received or you would never, let's say, invite this coworker out to lunch. Or you might see them on getting on an elevator, you might slow down to get on another elevator because it's just awkward because you, you can't connect in a meaningful way. It's just vibratory. It's not it's and it's nothing yeah. to do with the and then there's antiphase and antiphase is literally like when you just are around someone or something and it's just like you know this is not for me it's a strong aversion it's like i i don't i i just get a feeling i i'm not comfortable i need to leave right that's antiphase so what's happening now is a lot of relationships are going through this demand dismantling process it's not personal it doesn't even mean that you don't love the person it just means that energetically there's such a gap now that you can't connect in a meaningful way and in order to try and bridge that connection it usually means somebody's got to lower themselves or pretend to be something they're not anymore and that self-betrayal starts to feel really 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 uncomfortable and so mm -hmm. right and so yeah Right, but we want to hold on to the comfort often because that's our identity too. That a lot of times, let's say we're in a long-term partnership, this has become we've become a unit. This is my identity. If I'm not with this person, yeah. who am I? So it can be this can shake your life up. Like I mean, dismantle things, right? And it can be difficult. And I think people, this is a time where I think people need community. They need support. Support. That's what community is all about, right? You no, know, that's why. I don't think we're meant to do this. We're not meant to do this in a in a in a bubble. We're we're meant. That's why we're here together. We're meant to do this, you know, in community because we need we need it, right? Yeah, and that's why I'm really grateful for the community that I have, uh, Sacred Kingdom online community, and. You know, just just being able to have 
uh, access and connection basically 24 seven to, you know, other like minds and yeah. other self-aware individuals yeah. is it's really everything, especially for me. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm someone that I really, I don't have much family in my life, mm -hmm. uh, blood family that is. Mm -hmm. So I treat, you know, soul family and others very much like my family. Oh, yeah, so me. community is a big thing for me yeah, and me to be a part of community and also host mm -hmm. it, it means everything yeah. and to be able to see how effective it can be on shaping and shifting well, life after life of course quickly Even around the world just think about Ooh. the energy coming together right you create that container and then the energy comes together the container gets stronger but when i remember we were talking about the resonance right you're in phase and then it, it, you up you're uplifting you're actually activating each other just by yeah. engagement being in the community so you know we always think again like you were saying about that mask and we always think we have to it's got to be tangible we got to be doing 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 to be in our purpose or to be on the path and i would say a lot of it is just being it's not doing it's being it's just being allowing the energy your your unique blueprint to come forth to embody more of that energy and actually marcus before i forget i had that diagram about embodiment the layers of embodiment yep so, i love this diagram so i feel like it gives some context and this diagram uh, is um this is lisa renee's diagram <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's so funny cool. because I was going to bring it up and every time I'm about to bring something up, mm -hmm. you literally say it. It's so funny. That's good. Yeah. We're, on the same, we're on the same wavelength. That we are. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. Graham. And so if you look at dimensionally states of consciousness right the incarnate level right is the personality level so this is dimension consciously it's dimension one through three so a lot of a lot of the uh collective is still in this incarnate stage and so incarnate stage is kind of like uh survival it's you know my physical needs are they being met um it's buying into a lot of this you know prescribed way of living where you know your worth is dependent on your grades and then what kind of job you have and then on what kind of house you buy and all of that sort of stuff right um a lot of uh fear a lot, there's a lot of fear right and a disconnection from the the essence then as you start to kind of ascend up right into the soul layers which is dimension four through six this is when you really feel that connection to something beyond you. Um, you, you know, feel energy. You can, um, you know, believe in kind of the paranormal or you just have this sense of, you know, you understand um, certain like things about natural law just naturally. And I, I think a lot of us actually come in at the soul level to some degree where you feel the connection you feel you and this may make you feel outside of things or like you feel things deeply or it can make you feel like you don't really belong here right um because you're coming in at a higher level of uh dimensionalization or a higher level of consciousness and then when you move from kind of the soul kind of embodiment level you're moving into monadic embodiment and that is really I think when you really start to, you really, your gifts or your abilities can really start to come online here, um, where you're maybe more, uh, very much more conscious with working with, um, you know, energy, or you have more and more inner knowing that process of gnosis where you just know things, or you start to, um, I don't know, really tr transcend and really step into your DNA, into your gifts um into your abilities um you know things like telepathy all of that all that stuff which i think every every human is capable of 
Um, and then you move into the avatar level, which is dimensional 10 uh, up to 15. And I don't even know what that looks like. But so I feel like this diagram I find is helpful just to get a context for, um, you know, the different stages. And one thing that I do, and I mean, you could, you know, people, I would invite you to do this is to sit with yourself. If, if this is something you're interested in, sit with yourself and ask, go inward and ask your higher self, where am I? where am i at where where am i at in the embodiment stage you know often when i sit with clients i'll ask and i get i get a number um which it doesn't mean anything it just sometimes it can give context for you know i can relate better to the person in front of me and i could explain things in such a way um but it's interesting um and so it also this also i would say that when we look at people who are in that incarnate level or they're locked into the the kind of the negative ego or personality layers if you think of it as again not not higher or lower even not good or better or worse or whatever but if you just think about you know people on a shelf right and some people come in and they're on you know a lower shelf and so from the lower shelf their viewpoint they can only see a little bit of the floor that's all they can see that's all they know people on the higher shelves who come in and you know are on the top shelves they can see the whole room right they have their perception is they have a broader perception they have more vision they can see more of the 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 room more of you know they can see more, they feel more, they're experiencing more because of their vantage point. And I think this is all this is, is different dimensional levels have different levels of awareness and they have a different vantage point, right? And there are a lot of people right now who, who are really entering into, I feel, uh, the soul, the soul layers, things are being unlocked, right, in people. They're really coming in and they're starting, that's why I think there's so many people all of a sudden really drawn towards or looking for alternative healing, holistic healing. They're interested uh, in understanding their energy body. They're interested in, you know, the chakras. They start to kind of look for, you know, information and they start, I don't know, going and exploring YouTube, looking for, you know, so they can have context for what they're going through, right? And I think um, there's more and more people looking for that right now because yes. there's no manual for this and um sometimes we we feel it but we just don't have the words um or we in a way where our conscious mind can kind of understand what we're perceiving and so i find like diagrams like these can be really helpful and just giving a bit of context now um would you like me to, to pull up the the emotional diagram sure yeah yeah it's a good i like this one a lot too so this is just looking at emotions as frequencies as energy and so the very actual lowest emotional state is shame and shame actually is more than just emotion it actually has an affect to it meaning that when you feel ashamed it can actually feel like you ever feel like it's like the pit in your stomach it's 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 actually it's got like an affect to it it's very strong so shame would be on the lower lowest of the vib vibration you know the spectrum of emotions and then you know at the top we've got you know love and joy and peace and enlightenment um and then in the middle you've got more kind of neutrality and willingness acceptance you know um and actually, you know, sometimes people can mistake in neutrality, I think, for apathy, right? Um, yeah. But to me, they're two very different. If you look on this kind of, uh, this diagram, you can see apathy is third up from the bottom. And neutrality is kind of up, moving up towards, kind of up higher towards the top there, right? And yeah, I, I, I feel like, I was just going to say, I feel like apathy is kind of more like it's like you're not aware mm -hmm. that you know the rejection the 
the uh, the unwillingness to feel mm-hmm. what the other person is feeling mm-hmm. is from a place of just not being aware that it is also you. Right. And then neutrality is like coming more from a place of I know I'm connected to all Mm -hmm. and it's not on me Mm -hmm. to control right this outcome or to control how how this person feels right and to me neutrality I think is really um, the term that I like that I think encapsulates that is being the compassionate witness being able to observe and hold kind of and you know we we hear that kind of uh, phrase holding space right and again it's kind of that neutral observer right um that state of kind of allowing people to be who they are and not feeling like you have to fix them save them change them uh convert them right and just allowing people to be who they are and not taking it personal right not making it about you um and then apathy to me is can feel kind of right because it's got that kind of it's it's not charged it's not particularly charged right but to me apathy is a kind of when you've checked out and you just don't usually it's like i i feel numb it's a numbness i don't really care i don't really care about myself i feel like i've just given up right i don't care about myself i don't care about what happens to other people i just feel numb and I just kind of yeah. I'm and I've checked out. I think it, apathy comes with a level of disassociation, right? And which can be uh, a form of yeah. self-protection, self-preservation. When you're going through something, it's like, I can't, I can't endure this. So I, I'm just going to check out and I become numb and I become kind of apathetic to everybody and everything. Right. So, but I think, neutrality yeah, that's an excellent way to describe it yeah but i think neutrality is actually um for the most part i would say personally is neutrality is what i strive where i strive to be as my baseline be neutral right be the compassionate witness yeah yeah i, I feel like neutrality is a great goal for like all empaths yeah i i agree it's it's the best (laughs) it's the best i think it's it's that way of when you can be the compassionate witness you're less likely to be absorbing others energy yeah exactly yeah and then you're also like still in the awareness that you know you holding the space and being is being a funnel of transmutation exactly exactly when you keep that in your awareness too Mm -hmm. in your mental awareness that's very helpful too yeah so that it's just like i am yes transmuting you know i am the violet flame Mm -hmm. i am just allowing this energy to be purified Mm -hmm. and it's just flowing through my being being purified by love (laughs) yeah you don't actually have to be doing anything and i think i think the biggest thing is for me one of the biggest things that has served me well is allowing people to be who they are and Oof. right oh yeah allowing them to be who they are and then also there is one other one um i can't remember now but i something i'll always say is if i'm going through a difficult time i'm feeling like i i'm not sure what i'm doing or i I feel like i'm stuck or i feel like i don't know kind of what the next stage is but i feel like things have to move or have to change and i i'm feeling overwhelmed i'll i literally will say um and i find when i say this out loud it takes the edge off of it and i'll literally say basically you know I say, I use God, I say, God, whatever needs to end, let it end. 
whatever needs to come, let it come. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's kind of that state of surrender where I'm just kind of saying like, whatever needs to happen, let it happen for my greatest and highest good or for everyone's greatest and highest good. And let me get out of the way with what I think I need. Right. You know, and I find when I just say that, whatever needs to end, let it end, whatever needs to come, please let it come or let it be received, kind of takes the weight of the world off my shoulders because, uh, you know, we always are in our head thinking we have to know everything and figure everything out. As soon as there's a problem, yeah. we solve it. But this kind of takes some of that weight off and it just allows for the clarity to come in and you kind of get into a space of I know when I when I know what to do, I'll do it. And when I don't know, yeah. I'll wait, right? That mm -hmm. That's the state that I like to be in. Me too. Uh, that's, that, Me is, too. that is where I try to keep myself naturally. So it is I. that type of flow state. And, you know, it requires not only having your, um, you know, your, your ascension connection open, or your crown chakra activated, but also it's helpful to be grounded and to have a secure anchor to the earth. Um, yeah. You know, your root chakra, your earth star chakra. Mm -hmm. um, the more grounded you are, mm -hmm. the more you can blossom your branches. So that's, that's you, know, a great you can only fly as high as you can reach with your roots, right. as they say. Well, what and is a that? Lot of us want to fly and ascend yeah but we don't talk about grounding and rooting no well if you're not grounded you go into sometimes you can go into magical thinking or you, people get they 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 think that impulse is intuition right oh yeah yeah oh yeah because it, yeah because if you're ungrounded a lot of times people, you know, a lot of us, I had, I used to have a real problem with grounding because for a long time, I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to participate. As a kid, I used to literally say in my head, I don't wish to participate. So I would flo float up, float up where I felt comfortable, but I wasn't grounded. So then I wasn't able to, sh I, I felt kind of like disconnected and I, I didn't, didn't, want to deal with things right i didn't want to deal with things that were more like tangible things like money and i didn't want to deal with all of it. i still don't love all of that but you know what i mean i was trying to kind of escape it all um yeah. and i but i was kind of floating i used to float outside of my body i'd go around like that where i was just kind of almost disoriented where i i couldn't really judge time and space i felt like kind of loopy like i was on like cold meds or something and then I realized after like all those times I was kind of ungrounded because I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be here. I didn't, I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel the world was safe for me to be in. So I would slip out. Right. Yeah. And during those type of moments, what looking back in hindsight, what are some of your, your main keys of, helpful tools that you would utilize if you well, felt that ungrounded well i used to so I'll, I'll say used to i used to work in um uh in a in very corporate jobs right for a long for a good a good amount of time and i would have a lot of anxiety in the morning when i was getting ready to go to work because i I didn't know what was going to happen or what was going to be asked of me or how long I was going to, I felt like I didn't have any control. Once I went to work, I had no control over myself. That's what I felt like I, right. And it would give me intense anxiety. I used to get it to sometimes going to school. Um, and it, I would be trying to get ready, but I couldn't focus. I'd even like be dropping things. I'd be, you know what I mean? I, I just in like I was spinning and one thing that really, really helped me is just standing with my feet on, you know, the ground. I didn't even necessarily go outside and just close my eyes, take deep breaths to kind of 
to kind of calm myself down and kind of get the energy opening, even though at that time I didn't even realize that. And imagining those energetic roots growing out of my feet or roots growing out of my feet deep into the earth. And then I would imagine that as I was standing, standing there and my feet were being pulled down into the earth, like I would imagine that someone was trying to come up behind me and kind of lift me up from underneath like my arms, like lift me up. But the, every time they tried to lift, I get pulled deeper. So then I would become unmovable like a tree. And then I'd open my eyes and I'd be in my body again. Sometimes I would just say to myself, get in your body. You need to be here. And it would happen. It'd be like, mm -hmm. you can't be doing this. I need you here. You've got to come back. We got to be here. We have to do, we have to be here today, you know, and yeah. I could literally pull myself back in, but I initially started with the roots and that helped me a lot for, for a long time, you know, until it, it doesn't happen to me very often anymore, but it still does. And I'll still, I'll still just intentionally stand with and imagine my feet connecting to the earth and it, or I'll, I do, there's a shielding technique. It's actually, it, to me, it's like uh, uh, energetic physiotherapy and it's uh, the 12 dimensional shielding technique where you, like you were saying, you oh. connect to the heart of the Probably earth. So. Yeah, and then you connect into the heart of the universe yeah. and you multi-dimensional ground. That one changed, honestly, honestly, that one changed my life. I love that one. The 12D platinum, platinum shield. shield changed my life and uh i'll we'll post it on the end of this yeah podcast. yeah because i actually don't think that i would be able to do what i do now working with clients energetically and on the subconscious level if i didn't <clears throat> if i couldn't have that shielding and it's not even about protecting you it's not about oh i'm afraid of the energy i'm going to absorb it it's about building stronger energetic boundaries and it's it's to me that shielding technique is energetic therapy it's like energetic physiotherapy 101 101 and i do it every day and i do it before i open up my day with clients and i do it at night quickly before i go to bed right yeah yeah, it's it's not about <clears throat> it's not about protecting ourselves out of fear. You know, strengthening it's, your light body. It's, yeah, it's about strengthening, and also, it's it's just really about uh, being being in alignment with intelligence of self, as in just knowing like, okay, if I'm not sealing my energy field, and I'm empathic, yeah, and I'm also working on you know some wounds that are very vulnerable right now yes. then that means my energy field is going to be susceptible to absorbing energies when i go out in public or when i'm hanging out with people and other things like that in nature watching a movie and so therefore you know the reason why i would protect my energy is because i want to protect this tenderness i want to protect these vulnerable spots from becoming more damaged or becoming infected with other information or other energies or you just don't want to take on you know other people's energy so that's why you protect yourself yeah it's energetic hygiene it's just like you to me the shielding can be a form of uh energetic hygiene just like you you know have a shower um, clean your physical body using the shielding is a way to practice that cleansing of your energy field because it can actually be a cleanser if you've picked up stuff it helps release it once you do the shield but also another thing I forgot to mention when you're going through these embodiment shifts so let's say you're moving from you know the soul level up into the monadic you know state of consciousness when you're in between those states there's a lot of density there's a lot of purging there's a lot of stuff going on and you're very vulnerable in that state because you haven't fully grounded the, or integrated that new level of consciousness awareness yet and so the in-between state is when you're very vulnerable and that's where you can i think you can absorb a lot more 
in the in between and it can feel the in between can feel really uncomfortable as you're but you just and you'll just know it's kind of like you'll just kind of know somehow that I'm shifting. I'm 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 moving up to another another level, and it's kind of like mm -hmm. as you do that, more density has to be dropped, and then that in between, vulnerable, vulnerable to a lot of absorption of other energy. Also, there are energies that don't wish for you to evolve, right? Yep. Right. And then that can feel like there's a lot, you can have just interference, feels like there's like, you know, chaos around you or something, right? So, but that's a whole other, <laughs> I feel like that's a whole other talk, a whole other talk. But, um, yeah, but I, I would say, um, you know, if I had to just give advice, um, that I think when you're going through this, the nurturing, that self-awareness is key. Being able to to give yourself the space to go inward is key, right? To, to figure it out, to feel it out, to, to untangle it. Because sometimes we feel very upset, but we don't even know why we're so upset. You know, can we go inward and just allow or give ourselves the time to kind of untangle it and feel into it and get the clarity around what is it that I'm actually feeling, right? And where is this coming from? right um and then i think along with that is that ability to, to take ownership right and have that level of self-awareness and and ownership and taking accountability for how you respond to things or how you react to things right um owning your energy you know knowing that if i am super reactive is that the kind of energy i want to be putting out into the world is that is that how i want to influence the energy of people around me through this kind of charge or do i want to sit with it and do i want to bring it down and then do i want to engage right um and i think again you know self-compassion self-acceptance self-nurturing is key self-forgiveness is key when you know better you do better also you know trying to forgive other people or even just trying to understand where they're coming from you know what i mean um instead of judging just understanding you know okay so this person has done this or is acting like this why would the, why are they doing that and trying to have some level of com more compassion for where they're coming from and you can do that if you stop taking everything personally and that's the biggest thing i've had to learn is to stop taking things personally and i'll tell you something that i've encountered and i don't know marcus maybe it's not something you've encountered but the more i embody who i truly am the more people either really like me or really don't oh right and it's yeah. it's not personal again this is not personal mm -hmm. the more light you hold the more when people are around you you can illuminate shadow shadow aspects or things within them that they don't they're not ready to look at or feel and when you're yeah. around you just start to draw them out but it's not on purpose and so people can be very adverse to your energy but you cannot take that personally because if you do you're going to be just everything's much more difficult right yeah and it's going to also to pull you down into exactly you know, a a lower density yeah and i think learning again what how what self-sourcing looks what does that look like for you how do you nurture yourself how do you take care of yourself what do you how do you give yourself what you need and not looking for anybody to validate your needs you know and not comparing sure. yourself to what other people are doing and just honoring your journey your path is your path and it, everybody's got a unique blueprint and and so everybody has these beautiful unique gifts and you know that means we all have a unique path right and i don't want to be like marcus i don't want 
to be, I don't want to aspire to what Marcus is doing. I respect what you do and I think it's great, but I need to do what I need to do because that's what makes it so special is because it's coming through my unique blueprint, right? Yeah. Yeah, so not, exactly. a, not kind of aspiring to other people and just kind of letting it unfold organically within you because that's what you're meant to be right doing is what is uniquely you and then when we get caught up in it, it should be like this or i i want to be like this or i'm gonna you know what i mean you lose some of the you lose the essence and if i tried to copy you marcus and say i'm gonna practice everything the way you practice it i would lose my essence in there and then what i was doing wouldn't be as powerful right because it's yeah it needs to come from that again. I Right? Then it creates a lot of situations where it can create, <laughs> you know, like jealousy and, you know, idoliz mm -hmm. idolization and Ubers. a lot of other things as well. Things. Um, so, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's really beautiful. You know, these unique blueprints that we all have. I think so. And that, that, that's what we're here to, that's what we're here to share. That's what we're here to unlock. That's what we're here to embody. And so I think you've got to just go in and allow whatever it is for you to be expressed, you know, and not get caught up in all, it should be this, or I need to be this, or I need to look like this in order to be on the path. I, I would say that that's, that's not true. You need yeah, to absolutely. be who you are and, and be where you are. I also would have to say too, you know, as as we kind of come towards the close of the podcast is, you know, if you don't really know where to go next or where to start mm -hmm. or you're maybe a little lost on your path, you know, the one thing that you can always do is focus on self mm -hmm. yeah you don't know what to do next do a practice mm -hmm. do a meditation mm -hmm. go in clear out your chakras yeah go in go in you the answer programming they're in there you already clear know belief yeah. patterns you're having you know address wounds pains yeah. that you're having you know if you don't know what to do next like you can always focus on these things right here mm -hmm. and i'm sure you'll find plenty to focus on yeah and then you'll find that the more you just focus on being in present and balance and in harmony with your being Mm -hmm. then the more everything just intuitively and naturally happens with you and mm -hmm. for you. I agree. And, and say, least Marcus, resistance. Yes. Would you say, Marcus, to people who say, you know, I don't, like, I, I don't really know how to meditate or I'm not really able to meditate. I, I tell people walking is a form of meditation. Driving can be a form of meditation. Uh, movement can be a form of meditation. Um, mm. So, you know, start start where it feels comfortable for you. You know, like if you're like, I can't just sit there and meditate because I can't shut my mind down. Okay, then why don't you go for a walk and just try to be yeah. present with how are you feeling on the walk? Not what you think. How do I feel? And you you can start to go into a meditative state. Driving, long drives can be very meditative. Oh, yeah. In silence, not not with like the radio and stuff on, but just driving silently. I often will do that when I'm looking for clarity. I'll go for a drive, you know, and just yeah. be with myself, be with my thoughts, kind of, and ask ask the questions. Another thing, ask for help, you know, um, you know, whatever you believe in, God, your guides, you know, whatever resonates, source, you know, ask for assistance, ask for support, ask for guidance, say, you know, I don't know what to do here. I'm feeling overwhelmed. You know, I, I don't help me because 
I know with the benevolent forces, they will never in, intervene or infringe on your free will. So the more you ask, and you know, even you know, praying is a, is the same thing. The more you ask and the more you communicate, the more they can assist you. Right? Yeah. You exactly. know that that adage: "Give it to God." Sometimes you just give it to God, Source, the Universe, whatever. You know. Mm -hmm. It can it can help. I when I do that, it like I said earlier, it lifts the weight. Where I feel like sometimes we feel like we're all alone and we have to un figure it all out ourselves, but that's not true. That's not true. There are forces that we can co-create with who will partner with us, but we have to we have to ask and we have to communicate with them. Right? Yeah. And that's not, that's, that's <laughs> why I love. Yell at them. I yell at them sometimes. <laughs> that's why I love doing what I do with uh you know my show Rising with Raw. Mm -hmm. is um you know i educate people on a chakra for each episode and mm -hmm. i also do a spirit guide to connect with that chakra so mm -hmm. i like it to uh, you know educate people on different spirit guides mm -hmm. it's really cool mm -hmm. yeah and, and my and favorite I, thing yeah and i always feel like going to you know your higher self your god self always yep. is there for you always even you know always so get in the, get in the shower that's another way i meditate i go in water water meditate oh, yeah. a lot comes to me when i'm showering so yeah i think it's all about just creating this space to create that space where you can have that sense of you can go inward you can have stillness so whatever that looks like whether that's at the gym that's in your shower that's lying in your bed that's going for a drive or a walk it doesn't matter it just you have to figure out what works for you and then you make the space because if we don't make this space it's very hard to get if we don't create this space it's hard to receive the guidance right yeah exactly and also um you know when we're getting into that space you know that meditative type of space uh, you know, try to optimize it consciously mm -hmm. as in like when you're in that type of flow, when you're in that type of energy and you're consciously aware of it, you know, try to optimize what you're doing during mm -hmm. that energy and during that space. Mm -hmm. If you're kind of like, you know, boosting it with love or if you're kind of allowing it to shine a little bit and spread, um, just really just being aware of how you're using that space as well yeah 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 but um yeah and i think you know also there's a time sometimes where you know there's different modalities and different practitioners that can assist you they can't do it for you but they can assist you in in helping you clear and helping you come get the clarity and helping you release some of these old distorted patterns and childhood stuff and you know it's also that can also be beneficial as support, but it's you've got to do the heavy lifting though yourself, right? No one can fix you. You fix yourself. You and fix is the wrong word. No one can heal you. You are your own healer, right? So. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing of it. You know, it's that's the you power that each one of us have is the power to do that and to be that because we are that exactly. and you know how much more loving could it be than to be reminded of that mm -hmm. and be given the space to even go through the process of remembering and mm -hmm. going through some faults if we have to i mean mm -hmm. like how much more could we be loved mm -hmm. yeah absolutely absolutely well marcus I should get, I got to run, but uh, yeah, it was great connecting with you again. And, you know, I think sharing kind of this space and you know, sharing some insight, hopefully people resonate with it and can find it to be supportive. Yeah. Absolutely. I trust that will be, I definitely trust these airwaves will resonate with exactly who it magnetizes for yeah. and Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you for your energy, your efforts, you know, taking some time out of your schedule with all that you do and all that you provide to come out of a sacred light conversation with me. I really yes. appreciate it. And for everybody out there, where can everybody find you at, contact you, and um, be a part of your light? Sure. So if you're looking for me, you can find me um, through my website, which is uh, natural. It's naturalhealingreiki.ca. And um, then on Instagram, I'm under, you know, natural underscore healing energy underscore energy work. Um, yeah, but through my website, if you go to the website, you can, you know, all my information is there. You can email me or you can um, text me or call me. Um, and also through Instagram, you can reach out to me as well. I, I don't have online booking on my site. Um, I, I kind of do it the old fashioned way. Um, and I kind of connect with everybody before for new clients or new people. I connect with them before and, you know, that's how um, I am too, actually. Yeah. I like to connect first and, uh, then I, then I will book it together. I don't have like an online booking, so you have to reach out to me directly. And, you know, and I also have a meditation group. Uh, that I do every Wednesday evening at eight o'clock. That's on my website as well. And, you know, we do a lot of, uh, a lot of this kind of um, integration work and just clearing out the chakras and stuff like that. And I use hypnosis. I combine the hypnosis with the energy work, which I do because I, it's just, I have to, um, because it's the way, it's the only way that I can kind of do it. Everything for me is energy first, and then the hypnosis kind of came in second. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a way to go deeper, I think, uh, just with the deep, with the hip, hypnosis, kind of the deep relaxation and stuff. And so that's something Yeah, it brings else. you more subtly into the subconscious. Into the so theta. You, it's yeah, a subconscious uh, reprogramming state. Yeah, and it's really good too for central nervous system reset. Um, it helps bring the central nervous system back into a kind of a state where it can decompress it when you go into a state of deep relaxation. Plus, deep relaxation means energy receivers are open, and then we do the meditation, right? Which is, we want the receivers open. So, yeah. So that that's a way to kind of, I think, a way to connect with me if you're not sure, if you, you, know, you want to do maybe session work or something, but that's a way that, you know, it's very accessible for everybody. Yeah. Well, for everybody out there, thank you guys for all tuning in and being a part of this wonderful space on the Sacred Light conversation that we had with Lisa out of Toronto. And this was on shedding density. And along with that, there's many golden nuggets throughout it to help you become more self-aware of who you are as a multidimensional being and how to be more holistic and conscious about your everyday approaches. Thank you guys. And don't forget to subscribe if you would like to be in tune with more episodes and more content. And feel free to comment and leave your feedback. Wholeness and balanced love. Thank you for joining us for this conversation on the mothership. Be sure to contact Crystal Light to be a guest or book a service. You may also contact sacred guest Lisa for Reiki, hypnotherapy, addiction support and more. See you on the next mission.